Hi, I'm Robin Rapp. I'm a product and data science manager at Indeed.com, the world's number one job search engine. I graduated from UT Austin in 2016 with a PhD in sociology, where I studied how Americans build and maintain positive social ties. What drew me to my first job at Indeed as a business intelligence analyst was I really felt compelled to use the skills that I had built in my PhD program to actually make an impact on people's lives. So when you're in academia, um, oftentimes it can feel like you're really removed from being able to have the kind of impact uh, on other people in our communities that, that you might like. Something that really drew me to getting a job outside of academia was in academia you're often working mostly in isolation and so to me it felt really important to work with a team and to work with other people. Uh, I'm an extrovert and so being able to uh, kind of work with others and um, help make an impact together felt really appealing. In 2018 and 2019, Indeed was looking to redo the look and feel of their website. This was something that hadn't really been done on a broad scale before, and each attempt to do it had really had a tough time. And so what we were trying to do was we decided, okay, let's test every single UI element on the main search engine. So what happens if we take this button and we make it a different color? What happens if we change this font size and we just make it green and like 18 point font? We called that one the Hulk. And so we ended up running dozens and dozens of tests within the course of six months and it gave us such a wealth of knowledge and understanding that we were then able to really successfully use that and revamp the look and feel of indeed.com as we know it today which was really exciting to be able to be part of that i think that oftentimes when people see that i'm in a quantitative field they think oh the quantitative skills you know regression understanding how randomized controlled trial works um, coding yes all of those things are immensely helpful in my role but there's a few other skills that might surprise folks having a, an ability to teach is immensely helpful in industry um, oftentimes in my in a technical capacity i'm having to to explain highly technical concepts in ways that people can understand them who might not have the same background as me. I found that to be hugely helpful because when you can do that, you can bring other people along with you and for, for the ride and they're more likely to want to, to work with you on it. Um, project management. This is something that I think a lot of doctoral candidates take for granted. Um, these are often very highly achieving, hardworking, organized people and just being able to understand, okay, here's the scale of a project, here's all the things I know need to happen, and to be able to do that from start to conclusion and know what to prioritize is super helpful. Finally, the last thing that I would say that has been a useful skill is my background in qualitative interviewing. Uh, oftentimes, folks undervalue qualitative research. I think that's a huge mistake. I think that qualitative interviewing is so crucial to understand what are your users thinking? What, when they're using your product, what's going through their heads? Why are they doing it? Um, I can answer all kinds of questions with quantitative analysis. What, how much, how often, at what time? I can't ever really answer why the heck someone's doing something unless I actually talk to them. <laughs>
I show up, I listen, I ask questions, and usually I'm coaching. So it'll be me asking, all right, what do you want to see happen differently here? What does that look like to you? Um, so qualitative interviewing is, is actually really helpful uh, for my role as a, as a manager because oftentimes you don't know everything that's going on. And so you're having to kind of ask questions and be really curious and very, really present. Um, I actually think that anybody who's training to be a therapist in the psychology department might make a really good manager. <laughs> um, other parts of my day to day include learning and staying up to date on current and upcoming technology and techniques in the data science field. If you're not learning, you're going to stay stagnant and you're not going to be able to keep up. And so I dedicate at least a few hours of every week to just learn new techniques in the field so that I and my teammates can um, make sure that we're delivering the most impactful work that we can. And that comes from a love of learning that really gets supported in a PhD program, right? In a PhD program, you have to learn how to learn and to learn quickly. And so being able to know how to read and synthesize information really quickly is immensely helpful. One experience that I think people tend to underappreciate in a PhD program is that we become actually quite good at being able to persuade people. You're used to justifying your existence of research constantly, right? And so if you think about a typical academic paper, you will always have to say, here's the context, here's the problem at hand. Given that, here's what we're going to do. Here's the method and the approach I'm gonna take. Here's the caveats of that and what I've done to address them. And here's the next steps. Honestly, you can take that same approach to most business problems. And as long as you're not submitting a 20 page paper version of it and just like maybe a two slide version of it, you, it'll get you pretty far in being able to persuade people to take an approach. I realized that between having to really grind to publish and the um, kind of the relative isolation of, of, of working in academia, that it wasn't going to be a good fit for me personally. Um, I think a lot of folks do really, really well in academia. Um, I don't think it really would have worked for me longer term. And I was realizing that a little bit late into the game. Um, I'd say probably around year four, I started having some serious doubts. And the thing that really hit me, I'll never forget it, was I had a colleague tell me that graduate school is like a pie eating contest where the prize is more pie. And that hit me like a ton of bricks. And I'll never forget it because it was like, oh, I can't unring that bell now. Like I. I don't think that I don't think this is what I want my life to, to look like. Um, and so I started just kind of asking around my non-academic friends and they said, hey, here's what my resume, here's here's what my skills are. What is this? Like what when what what would you what would you call this? And and they would look at it and they'd say, Oh, well, so you know stats? Yeah. You know how to code? Yeah. Well, you're a data scientist. Well, what the hell is a data scientist? That's com that sounds completely made up, <laughs> you know. And this is you know five years ago. Since then, I think data science has become fairly fairly well well known outside of outside of tech. Um, and so I started researching it. And the more I read, the more I was like, oh, this actually seems like I get to do a lot of the same stuff, just in kind of a different context, like 